Chapter 5 Chinatown On this corner stands the Ah Louis store, the cornerstone of historic Chinatown. Feel free to stand right here in front of the mural to hear about Chinatown's history. We'll move out to the sidewalk to see the store a little later. California's gold rush of 1848 brought people from all over the world seeking their fortunes, including the Chinese. Like most other immigrants, they planned to find a claim, get rich, and then return home. Most, however, never did return home. They worked in mining areas at first, but as gold became scarce, laws were passed banning Chinese from mining, so they took to laboring in restaurants, on the railroads, and in laundries. Chinese laborers made lasting contributions building the narrow-gauge railroad through the county and making bricks for many of our historic buildings. They formed their own city center where they could gather, buy Chinese foods and supplies, worship in their own ways, and find entertainment. This was a common pattern all over California. What was also common was racism. When jobs became harder to find, Anglo-Americans vented their anger at the Chinese, blaming them for the low wages they were forced to accept. In 1882, Congress passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, making entry almost impossible to new Chinese immigrants and requiring current residents to apply for re-entry if they left the country. This made it impossible for them to visit their families back home. Adding insult to injury, the act was extended in 1902, requiring some Chinese immigrants to register for a certificate of residence without which they could be deported. The law did not affect merchants, however, which allowed certain Chinese-American families to prosper. Newspapers published by William Randolph Hearst spread fear and racism, adopting phrases like yellow peril and running hate-filled cartoons and editorials. Your screen will show you but one example of this. There were many, many more. Anti-miscegenation laws were passed to prevent interracial marriage, further alienating the Chinese community and making it harder for them to find good jobs. In San Luis Obispo, Chinatown was a self-sufficient microculture that spanned the 800 block of Palm Street, the result of forced segregation by the local community. If there is any doubt about the strength of these racist attitudes, here is an excerpt from the Tribune dated June 1, 1883. The Chinaman has crowded our laboring man from his means of support. He has opened his wash house and left hundreds of poor women without employment. He's found his way into the kitchen and is trying to ruin the stomachs of all America with his nauseous chow chow. A petition that would allow a Chinese shop to open up in the main shopping district on Hygera Street was met with equal venom. The attempt to make another Chinatown of Hygera Street has met with a protest from the merchants and traders generally doing business upon that leading street. It deserves the condemnation of every citizen of the town. If the desire is to drive respectable business off the street, a more effectual method could not be devised. Headlines from the San Luis Obispo Evening Breeze shows more examples of the prevalent anti-Chinese sentiments of the day. Palm Street was a haven from all that. Let's come out onto the sidewalk on Palm Street now and imagine this block as it was during the late 1800s. From here, you should see the Palm Theater and Mi Heng Lo directly across the street. The streets were unpaved and bordered by wooden sidewalks. A photo of little Elsie Louie from 1910 shows these sidewalks clearly. Though only a few of the buildings remain today, the block was made up of mostly two-story boarding houses and several businesses. There were three general merchandise stores with names like Lei Wa Li, Kuang Chong, and Wing Hing Lung. Several restaurants, one that still exists today across the street at Mi Heng Lo, now a noodle house, four small buildings used for gambling and smoking opium, and a Chinese temple formerly referred to as Joss House. The temple was a place of worship and was a regular feature of frontier Chinatowns. Remnants of this temple were donated to the History Center by Howard Louis, one of Ah Louis's sons. The term Joss comes from the Portuguese word for God, and though it was a term commonly used in Western English at the time, it was not used by the Chinese as they viewed it as derogatory. Though most of San Luis Obispo's original Chinese population moved on to San Francisco to larger Chinese-American communities and better jobs, members of the three original families still live here, the Louis, Chong, and Jin families. As you stand near the commemorative bell honoring Ah Louis, you'll hear about Chinatown's most famous family and the store that was the undisputed hub of the community, the Ah Louis family and store.